Do, 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 do I have internet? Yay, I have internet. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. I had a different video planned today, and that video got pushed. I think we're actually going to do Henson Week on this channel, uh, because I was going to cover uh, Mark Hamill's episode of The Muppet Show. But apologies, Mark Hamill, something has come up. And this is also a Henson property. If you are unaware, in 1976, Yes, I know that was a long time ago. There was an episode of Sesame Street that was filmed that guest starred Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West. The East? Witch of the West. East, West. In The Wizard of Oz. And uh, she reprised her role for this one specific episode that was meant to teach children about how to handle fear in a healthy way. A very important thing to teach children that we don't teach them often enough. But that's... Beside the point, legend has it that children were so terrified of seeing the Wicked Witch on Sesame Street that they had to pull the episode. In truth, they did have to pull the episode, but not really because the kids cared. The Muppet Wiki, yes, that is a thing. It's pretty cool. But it says the episode prompted an unusually large amount of male responses from parents almost entirely negative within a short time frame. Typically, responses included parents concerned that their children were afraid and now refused to watch the show, using such phrases as screams and tears, and the threat of the witch's power remains in children's eyes. The wiki also includes some handwritten letters from very angry parents, so in case you're wondering if people overreacted before the age of the internet, they did, they just had to hand write it down. People wanted to speak to the witch manager. And the wiki goes on to say that they basically had to hold kind of a test screening of sorts with children after this to see if it was really too much for them. Uh, and the results were pretty inconclusive because the kids, you know, were all in a room together and their parents were there and the episode is meant to deal with fear, so that's, I believe, part of it. So anyway, to be safe, Sesame Street pulled this episode after it aired originally, which is sad because I believe it is the last time we saw Margaret play the Wicked Witch, an iconic character to Hollywood history. And ever since it got pulled, this episode was thought to be lost media. Uh, nobody has seen this episode since. But then, last night, as I was getting all cozy in bed, I was scrolling through my phone and I realized someone uploaded the episode randomly on YouTube. I'm not sure who or why or how, but we now have this previously thought to be lost forever episode of Sesame Street that's kind of iconic, and I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but I really wanted to talk about this because I'm so fascinated. I want to know what they think is too scary for Sesame Street. There were some terrifying things on Sesame Street. Does anybody remember the, like, the the face in the the face in the darkness and it was counting and it had this, like, droning voice? I remember seeing clips of that and just being... Now then, a count of ten. Horrified. I'm gonna link the full episode below. It's obviously here on YouTube if you feel like checking out the whole thing. Uh, but I am just going to jump into it right now. Sunny day, sleeping up. Okay, we're two seconds in. Big Bird is on a horse-drawn cart. That, that makes me so happy, and I don't really even fully understand why. Come and play, everything's okay. That's the second verse. I was arguing with somebody about what the second verse was. Well, we weren't arguing. We just, neither one of us could remember what the second verse to the Sesame Street theme song was. We could remember the first one very clearly, but we couldn't remember the second one. Anyway, I'm not even a minute in. This is going to be a long video. Wow. Boy, that wind sure is blowing. It came up all of a sudden. So to start off this very spooky episode, we have a big windstorm blowing into Sesame Street. Something's falling right out of the sky. And here she comes, ladies and gentlemen, the Wicked Witch of... Oh, that's just her broom. As soon as I caught that broom, the wind stopped. Where is she? Is she okay? Is she just free-falling? Is she skydiving? Never looked a... Look a gift broom in the mouth. Might as well sweep all this garbage up. What a power move, sweeping up garbage with the Wicked Witch's broom. <laughs> There she is! The wind blew that broom right out from under me, from the looks of it. 
I know I'm not in Oz anymore. I love how she gets to say I'm not in Oz anymore because Dorothy says I'm not in Kansas anymore. Anyway. I must be over the rainbow somewhere. So to people of Oz, is the regular human world somewhere over the rainbow? It's kind of anticlimactic for them, I guess. What do you think you're doing with my room? Get it back. Don't argue, be nice. I don't be have true. to be careful with anything. You do, because that, that, that thing almost came, no. right out, it came out of the no. sky. No. Don't be mean to him. I know you're a movie villain, but still, be polite. Oh, yes, I can. No, you can't. Oh, flash warning. Flash warning from here, right here. <laughs> she gets shocked when she tries to take the broom back. I guess he owns her broom now. You may think you see the enemy, but you haven't. I'll be back. <laughs> That jump cut, I love it. Also, by the way, props to Margaret, just because um, apparently a lot of people went through stuff on the set of Wizard of Oz, but I believe, and there's a lot of urban legends surrounding Wizard of Oz, so I don't want to say something that's factually inaccurate, but I believe she suffered really bad burns because the trap door that like lowered her down when she like disappears in smoke uh, malfunctioned one time and she I guess got really injured on set and so like that sucks I'm glad that she gets to do a safe jump cut exit this time well she won't get this broom back until she shows me a little respect and dignity yeah I we then get uh, another segment briefly showing us that we're gonna be dealing with the letter I Big day for us today. Uh, we see a brief segment of children playing ball together. We all live in a yellow submarine. In a capital I. Oh, never mind. In the middle of the desert, in the center of the sky. Oh, so we get a song now. It reminds me of Schoolhouse Rock. You remember Schoolhouse Rock? I used to be obsessed with that as a kid. Okay, watch this, Betty Lou. <laughs> okay, Bert. Bert and I forget her name, but they're ice skating. This reminds me of the Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve on Sesame Street thing that we did last Christmas. You remember? You're so relaxed, Bert. Wow, well, as relaxed as I can get. The look of perpetual concentration that Bert has on his face is just so funny right now. Where'd you get this broom? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. You this? Oh, you would? You're not gonna believe this. Back with the broomstick storyline, David is um, relaying the story of how he got the broom, and nobody believes him until David. What is this? Some kind of a game? Ooh. What is this, David? Some kind of a game? Oh, God, she just popped up into the personal bubble just like that. D don't pay any attention to her. Just just give us some water. Uh, she doesn't tend to do so well with water. Oh, my world, my world. I don't, I don't think that's going to go over well. David! Oh. Oh. It's raining inside the store! And then she yeets away and makes it rain inside his store, which like water damage, you can't do that. I'm getting kind of wet. Can we uh, go outside? What the hell, lady? Oh God, this one time my kitchen flooded. <laughs> and downstairs in the basement, you would just, we walked downstairs and it looked like that. It was just the, the kitchen had flooded so much that water was just pouring in from the ceiling above. It's funny now. It's a L with a ball on top. Oh, I thought it said hell with a ball on top. I was like, you can't say hell on Sesame Street. This is the letter I. Many words start with the letter I. Like imperfect or in perpetuity. That's two words. And the one that springs to my lips is impolite like the witch making it rain inside we don't want to be impolite that means being rude or discourteous or having no manners tell us all about it bright boy i agree try not to be impolite please oh waiter yes sir grover hey charlie table 26 wants a hot alphabet soup hey, do, do, do. don't burn yourself grover be careful there's a j missing in this soup I don't want it without a J. What do you do in that situation? Do you just go in and like sift through the other spaghetti of t until you find a J? Also, why isn't I missing? Isn't this the I episode? <sighs> yes, sir. Now the O is missing. Mm -hmm. I don't want this soup without an O. Uh oh, the O is missing. Uh, yes, sir. No. Uh, sir? Ah. Sir? I have an O here for you. Wow, working in the food industry sucks. Yes, sir. Drop it in. There's the O. This dude better give Grover a massive tip. W X Y. Z is gonna be missing. I bet something is missing. The Y is missing. The Y is missing. Oh 
the Y is missing. Does anybody remember um, Nora Jones back in the day being on Sesame Street and singing Don't Know Why, Why Didn't Come? And now I'm feeling sad and alone. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, why didn't come. Adorable. Mr. Why makes a mistake and then it's, he wants to see me. Gerber's gonna lose his shit. Okay, now <gasps> let's see. A, B, C. Is there only one of each letter in the alphabet in the alphabet soup? Because that's a pretty thin soup. What? The soup's cold. Take it back and get me another bowl. <laughs> Gerber needs a new job. So back with the witch plot line, everybody's scared of her. David refuses to cave, though. He's like, I need to teach her a lesson. She's not going to get this back until she's respectful. I won't give back this broom until she shows me a little respect. Again, good for him. Hey, guys. What's Hi. happening? Big Bird. There is a wicked witch on Sesame Street. No kidding. A witch? A witch. Oh, no, Big Bird's so sensitive. He's going to be so scared. I'm a very brave bird. If I'm going to help fight off a witch or something, I guess... Guess I'll, I'll need a stick. He's gonna hit her with a stick? Hey, this one's too good. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, no. Oh god, the broom has changed possession again. This is like the elder wand. Not the broom! No. Oh. Again, flash warning. Oh. Oh. She doesn't learn. She keeps getting shocked. You would think she'd learn by now. And as for you, I find that they're friends. How would you like to be turned into one of these? You did not just threaten to turn Big Bird into a feather duster. I'm going to fight this lady. Uh, good night, uh, Ernie. Good night. Good night, Bert. Bert and Ernie are couples goals. You cannot tell me otherwise. Why am I thirsty? <laughs> well, if you're so thirsty, instead of just talking about it, Ernie, why don't you do something about it, huh? Well, that, that's a good idea, Bert. So cute. I know. I'll imagine that I'm drinking a nice tall glass of ice cold water. Oh, poor Ernie. Get him a drink, Bert. I could ask you to get up and get me a glass of water, Bert. How about that? Oh, well, sure you could ask, but I won't do it, Ernie. Bert and Ernie are really setting expectations realistically for what it's like to live with another person. Boy, am I hungry. I know. What I'll do is I'll imagine I'm eating a big peanut butter and banana sandwich. How about that? Ew, bananas. Ernie! 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 Look, oh, hi, look, Cookie Monster. oh, look what me got! And then we see Ernie with Cookie and Monster. With this machine, me can find out how many cookies in that cookie box. One, two, three. I don't know how this machine would work. I don't know what the science is. This kind of reminds me of when Jim told Dwight that you could buy Gadar online. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell how many cookies I have in my cookie jar at home, you know? Can I try it on a box of cookies now? Oh, it's not gonna work, because he ate all the cookies. Don't tickle, just point. Oh. Two. Three. It works even though it's in his stomach? Is it like an x-ray thing? It feels dangerous. Abierto. Cerrado. Does anybody remember there was a show on in the 90s on PBS? It was called Salsa. Sometimes I feel like it's a fever dream, but it was a show very much like kind of like it with the Sesame Street vibe, but it was in Spanish to teach children about Spanish. And I loved that show so much. I can't leave without it. I've got to get it back. I've got to make a plan of some sort. Well, what can I do? I feel like Oscar and the witch are going to be friends naturally, right? Or they're going to hate each other because they're too similar. I told him I'd turn him into a feather duster. <laughs> you know something? You have got to be the most beautiful person I have ever seen. Oh, keep still. Oscar has a crush on the witch. Wow, I think I'm in love. <sighs> Oscar has a celebrity crush that's adorable. Days and nights all filled with gloom. I'm not a witch. Till I get back my room. I don't think that's true. You can be a witch as long as you want to be. Now I'll go into the now I'll go into the store and see if I can get my broom. <laughs> Aww, I love that. She got to be in and out of the makeup. That's adorable. Oh. There's a nice lady coming in as a customer. You're new, aren't you, around yes. here? Yes, 
Uh, this is the first time I've been in the neighborhood. Like, hello, fellow Sesame Street residents. I am definitely not a witch. Would you like a cup of coffee or something? Oh, no. Thank you. I don't drink coffee. Oh, okay. She was such a pretty lady. I, I feel like I don't know anything about Margaret Hamilton personally, but, like, it's this cosmic law of the, the world that, like, people that play the villains are always, like, really sweet in real life. I don't know why that just is always true. It's all this broom here, this old broom. I mean, that old thing. This whole yeah. thing. That's, well, what does she want that though? Well, we don't know. I feel like she was probably a really sweet person. She made it rain in the air? Oh, really? I'm not kidding. Rain, right here in the store. It wasn't raining outside. She was making it rain back before that was a thing. Just, just put it down and then I could pick it up. Huh? Oh. Would you mind? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, huh? So David sees right through this, though, before she can get the broom back. Why don't you just give her the broom and be rid of her? And Maria's like, look, maybe you need to just let bygones be bygones. It's her broom, it's her property, just give it back and l both of you go on with your lives. I mean, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give her the broom until she starts treating me like a person. And then I'll give her the broom. Isn't it so sad when you have to make somebody treat you with common human decency? It's a way that make her treat me like a person and she'll get her broom back, so we both win. She called me names, oh. and she threatened me. I don't think a nice lady like you would think that way. So he's trying to teach her how to say, please. So, I mean, you you could ask me real nice, couldn't you, if you wanted to hold yeah. a broom, right? Yes. Please, may I hold the broom? <laughs> well, I am. Um, well, um, uh, would you... Um... And it's very difficult for the Wicked Witch. Young man, would you... Please let me hold the broom. But she gets there eventually. <laughs> I got it! I got it! My broom! My broom! Uh, now that you now that you got it, what are you gonna do? You! I'm gonna fly back to Oz as fast as lightning and never see Sesame Street again! And she's like, why are you gonna get revenge? And she's like, I'm gonna leave and you're never gonna see me again. And he's like, sweet. <laughs> Oh, David! I feel like you're not actually going to be seeing the last of her just the second. Oh! Oh no, that poor guy! Down. Oh no, that poor bird! Oh! Down. This feels very violent. Everybody stand up! We're all standing up! Everybody sit down! We're all sitting down! God bless Jim Henson for making puppets that even I can adore as somebody who was always, like, frightened of puppets ever since childhood. I've never been afraid of the Henson puppets. I think they're adorable. Well, Dark Crystal doesn't count. And, and Labyrinth and, and, and Return to Oz. But, you know, like, the, the, these, these are adorable puppets. My man show can teach. If you're an adult watching this and you are just as fascinated by an old school Sesame Street episode as I am, please tell me because I feel very strange being as enthralled <laughs> as I am as a full grown adult human by Sesame Street. But it's just so cute. Hey, John John, you know the difference between up and down? Up and down? Yeah. That kid is adorable. Up and down. And down. Up and down. I can't handle it. And now it's time for everybody's favorite reunion show. Here is your life. Oh, this feels very uh, existential. And now here is your here is your life host, Guy Smiley. God, Guy Smiley is a is a Henson puppet that I completely forgot about. Tonight's guest has had a wonderful life. And as someone you all know and love, a loaf of bread! So Guy Smiley is giving an existential crisis to a loaf of bread? Huh. Loaf of bread? Yes. How many slices do you want? I have so many questions about this, the idea of a sentient loaf of bread. When you take the bread, does it, does it hurt? Does it... What happens when you eat all the bread? Is that... Is that the end of her life? I have so many questions. She's also very long and twisty. I feel like she's like a bread worm. I remember Loaf of Bread when she was nothing more than a recipe in a book. Carol the Baker! Oh, Carol, oh, you look sensational. Is this like her meeting God? She's meeting her maker, literally. It's Cora Cow and Farmer Frankie! Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Oh, my God. These are like her 
parent? I'm having an existential crisis with you too, little piece of worm bread. I'm so sorry. It at least very much reminds me of one of the cows from a Muppet Classic Theater, but I could be wrong. It could just be that that's how Muppet cows look. Isn't that wonderful, audience? It sounds like Jim Henson actually doing the voice of Smiley. That's nice. Someone came and bought a loaf of bread next to you. <laughs> and that loaf of bread was your best friend. <laughs> Oh, this is very dark. She's been separated from her lifelong best friend. We found her! Oh no! Yes! <gasps> Betty and Melissa peanut butter and jelly sandwiches! Mutilated into PB&J sandwiches! And Danielle French toast! Oh, no! <laughs> if I was watching this as a kid in the 1970s, this would have scared me more than The Witch. Like, I'm not saying kids weren't scared of The Witch, because I'm sure I was at least a little bit afraid of her when I was little, but like, this is worse. This is a lot worse. Why weren't the parents writing fervently about this? Bald Eagle. Oh, poor bald eagles. I'm so sorry for America dragging your reputation down along with ours. I went to the Atlanta City Zoo a while back and I said that out loud to a couple of the eagles that they had there and these uh, Trump supporters that were standing behind me gave me a very stern look. These are the curly highways. Oh, I'm getting vertigo. I don't really like heights. That's improv! <laughs> so glad she's leaving! Maria saying she's glad that the witch is leaving right to her face is so metal. I'm glad she came here, because it was very interesting and really exciting! And bless Big Bird. Big Bird's just like, but I made a new friend, kind of, even though she hates all of us. All I want to do is to get out of here and fly home to Oz where I belong. Where does this take place timeline-wise? Does, do I need, I don't need to dissect that. I know, it's a Sesame Street episode, but like, she melted at the end, so like, did she unmelt? Is she still giving people shit there? Has Dorothy not crashed on her sister yet? I have questions. Room to Oz! Bye, witch! <laughs> Big Bird's feathers flapping in the wind is just so adorable. Look at the penguins taking a bath. Penguins! My mother says you cannot be unhappy and look at a penguin at the same time. So behold, you are now happy. <laughs> or at least you're not unhappy. It's kind of the same thing. Z. 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 They made it! Z. 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 Oh, no. <laughs> Can't you see? There's a bird on me. There's a bird on me. <laughs> Why was that funny? This video is probably going to be a mess, and you know what? I don't care. I don't want to complain or raise a fuss, but them birds up there think I'm a motor bus. Oh, gee. There's a bird on me. I suppose that is a common complaint of bigger animals that have smaller animals land on them. Probably not as big of a complaint as, like, you know, those animals, predators, hunting them down, but you know, we don't, we don't need to show the kids that, it's still Sesame Street. And all day long we polish on the eye to keep it clean and shiny so it brightens up the sky. Why is this song a vibe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count on my fingers, but I'm not, I don't have that dexterity to do it that fast. Faster, bro! Faster, faster! Fly, Wicked Witch! Fly, careful! Left! Oh, no. Oh, no, not again. What's that? Oh. It's like, what is that? No. Oh. It's the broom. Is this what she did the first time? Why didn't she learn her lesson? <laughs> oh, poor David. I don't know who that's a bigger L for, David or the witch. But that's it. That's the elusive lost episode of Sesame Street, which is not lost anymore. So I don't know who you are that originally got this online, but thank you very much because that was delightful. I'm really glad that we can have this piece of media and that it's not lost forever because um, Margaret Hamilton is, a, is an underrated enough actor without one of her roles being lost to the world. So, you know, for archival purposes, for nostalgia purposes, this is just lovely. I love that this happened. So I'm going to leave you guys here. I don't think this was too scary for kids. I think this is one of those things where the parents made too much of a fuss about it, right? But I'm not a parent. What do I know? Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me, you guys. Um, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel.
Bye.